Okay, welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where we're going to go through my predictions for the IGCSE Paper 4, the 0580 Cambridge course, which uh, the exams are on the 14th of February and the 9th of May. So let's get started. These are my topics of interest here, and you'll see it's quite a long list, but I'd like to talk very briefly about this before we look at the more certain topics that are going to come up. So notice quite a few of these, like trig equations, coordinate geometry here. Um, we've also got up and lower bounds. These are much more paper two orientated topics, so do keep that in mind. I'd like to highlight a couple of these, however. Vectors, for example, which you can see doesn't quite make the cut at six out of 13 appearances. These are often quite extended questions. So if vectors does appear, then it's gonna be quite a long question. So if you're looking for something to revise, once you revise the main topics, I would certainly select vectors as one of those topics. Likewise, the classic table of values question that they have on 0580 is something I'd also recommend to check out as well. So once you've looked at the topics I'm going to talk about, please do check out these two particular topics because when they come up, they come up with a bang and it could be quite a lot of marks that you may miss. Right, let's go on to my sometimes topic. So this is seven and above. The first one we're going to talk about here are circle theorems. And notice it almost made the cut also on the paper too. If it does appear, then it's going to be a detailed question and it's going to be worth many marks. Now this generally is seen as a medium level question. It's going to be in the middle of the paper somewhere. And you can see a sample question here as well. So make sure you've revised the alternate segment theorem. Make sure you've revised all the different theorems you've seen, about seven in total that you need to know in order to do these questions successfully. On to equation solving, which was much bigger, again, on the paper two, and you'll notice this with the sometimes topics, that generally they were bigger on the paper two. Um, this, again, is the medium level, I would say, and this can vary from simultaneous equations to linear equations. Occasionally, they'll pop in inequality as well. And you'll see a sample question here in front of you. So very similar skills to what's expected on paper two. So if you revise really well for paper two, then you haven't got anything really extra to revise for the paper four. Still appears eight in 13 times. On to expanding and factorizing, which was one of my real certain topics on paper two. As you can see here, it's more of a sometimes um, topic on paper four. Just be aware that if it doesn't come up in much detail on paper two, it's more likely to appear on paper four. As you can see, it's often a sub part of a question. I'll ask you something along these lines, just factorize completely the thing you see in front of you. So again, your paper two revision will be very well suited to the paper four as well. On to functions, and I had to put this into the sometimes category. It appears 18, 13 times, but it's a slightly unfair assessment here, and I'd like you to really revise this quite carefully, because when it does appear, it's usually one very big, long, extended question with many marks available. So please be aware of that. Uh, the skills that you need are composite functions, so something along the lines of this, or well, they may even ask you in general here, f of h of x, for example. Inverse functions, so they could ask you, for example, uh, f inverse of x. So you need to be able to do a question like that. And also some equation solving. So they might say some, for example, g of x is equal to zero, and then solve that equation. So lots of different kinds of questions can appear in functions, and you really do need to know them all, because if this appears, that's a lot, 15, 20 marks just disappeared. So please do revise this carefully. And now on to the almost certain category. So the previous section was actually quite short. And um, the first topic I want to discuss, which is definitely a paper four topic, really at the start of the paper, is transformations. Um, you should use tracing paper. So please do ask your teacher in the exam to use tracing paper. It will make the reflection rotation much, much easier for you. And you need to know those four basic uh, transformations, reflection, rotation, translation, and enlargement. And something they can do, and this is a question I've picked out from a paper in the last couple of years, is they'll sometimes ask you to describe the transformation to go from something to something. So for this question, notice it's out of three marks. So they're looking for three pieces of information to go from triangle T to triangle A. Please revise this. These are easy marks to get. And if you can maximize those easy marks and get plenty of marks on the more difficult questions, you're on a long way to getting a great grade. 
on to percentage calculations, which is a real favorite of the 0580 course. They love putting it into the papers. The skills, however, are very similar to the paper two questions. Notice it was also a priority on the paper two prediction video. Um, so you don't need to learn extra skills for the paper four here. Uh, generally at the start of the paper as well. So these are easy marks you want to try and get in the bag. As you see, this was a sub question for I think question one, if I remember rightly. And again, it's just asking for your knowledge of reverse percentage change, percentage uh, calculations generally, working out percentage of something and working with compound interest. On to sine and cosine rule and bearings. Again, much more paper four orientated. Uh, this can be, again, long extended question. It's paper four, of course to work out various sides and angles and something like this would be very very typical this is question five they give you some sides and angles and you need to calculate a c using all the information that you know in the question so just remember what the sine rule is so that's going to be a over sine a equals b over sine b or the other way around it can be flipped and of course the cosine rule which is c squared equals a squared plus b squared minus 2ab cos c so know those rules and know how to apply them to an extended question which is very typical of paper four ratio problem solving which is a kind of a strange one to put in here but it comes up so often so i was going through the papers and particularly questions one and two and there's always a ratio kind of question i thought i'd just highlight that to you just to make sure that you revise this properly yeah even though it can be an easy topic and they simply are marks not to be missed so you can see a question here, very straightforward. You've got three taxi drivers, they drive um, total amount in the ratio, and then you just need to go through your dividing by a given ratio method. So please do revise this. This is uh, one of the sort of bonuses of this kind of video. I'm really going deep into these papers and trying to find patterns for you. And one thing I did find is these ratio problem solving questions do appear, but as I say at the top here, almost certain. I'm sure this is the section that you wanted to see, which is that certain category. And number one is probably the biggest topic on paper four and one of the biggest topics on paper two. And that is volume area of 2D, 3D shapes. And that includes these similarity kind of questions as well. And I've written here simply, it is a topic to master. You really need to get a load of questions, how to work out surface area of a cone, the volume of a cylinder, for example, uh, combinations of those together, uh, doing these so-called uh, flow of water out and in kind of questions as well, because uh, this is a massive part of the course. Um, I've taken a, a typical example here. This is question three, so this is quite early on in the paper. And normally notice here, they usually prompt you which formula you want to use. So this is something particular to this paper. So if you need to use the surface area of a cone formula, they'll point you in the right direction. So please do read that part under the question. That's hopefully going to guide you into the correct process. So these kind of questions are appearing very, very often. And if there's one topic to prioritize out of everything I've talked about today, then it's going to be this particular topic a whopping 15 in 13 papers. On to quadratic equations, I've separated out as a separate topic. However, the quadratics can appear in a number of forms. First of all, they can appear in the so-called completing the square form. So they may want you to write it like this. So x plus h all squared plus k, or x minus h all squared plus k. So writing it in this form or vertex form, they may want you to solve directly. So they give you some random quadratic, I don't know, something like this equals to zero. I expect you to work out what X is. They could do a geometric problem that leads to a quadratic. So they could do something along these lines where this is say X plus two, this is X minus four. And then the area is 16 square centimeters. And then work out what X is. They could do this or they could do some graph sketching. So they could ask you, okay, how do I sketch this on a graph? So what does this function look like? Y equals X squared minus X minus six. Um, this is an example I picked out from a paper, a whopping six marks, so keep that in mind. So they also do this, so they might take a straight line and a quadratic, and then you need to find intersection points, uh, solving quadratics to get there. So be aware of this topic, be aware of the sort of four or five different ways that this topic can appear to you. And this, as I said here, is a certain topic, so it's the kind of topic that's going to appear. 
On to statistics, and the focus here compared to paper two is something really to take into account. So the key things, you need to work out the estimate of a mean. So you need to be able to do that. Generally, it's from a table. Occasionally, it's also from a histogram as well. Uh, work with cumulative frequency graphs. So what cumulative frequency graph is, how to plot it, how to interpret it, and read off some values. How to draw a box plot or a box and whisker diagram. Um, how to work out, excuse me, how to work out the lower quartile, upper quartile, median, how to draw a box plot as well. And remember that histograms is on this course. So the 0580 course still has histograms and it's still coming up. So make sure you know how to draw a histogram, which is a frequency density bar chart, essentially. Okay, here's a sample question for you as well. So you can see this is, again, a sub question. Question three is a bit of speed distance time later on. Uh, where you need to work out a minimum, median, and the interquartile range. Remember, the interquartile range here is just the length of the particular box here. And on to differentiation, which is a highly popular topic on the paper form, particularly towards the difficult end of the course. So if you're aiming for A's and A stars, this topic could be the difference between you getting from a B to an A or an A to an A star. In fact, I know how difficult this topic is for you out there. So I actually did an all of differentiation video for you that goes through as many questions as I could find on this topic on this course. So please do click the link above if you want to investigate this in more detail. And this is the typical kind of question they could give you. So to calculate the gradient at a specific point, that comes up reasonably often. So step one is you need to work out dy by dx. And again, you can watch that video if you want me to go through this in more detail. And then you need to substitute the value x equals one point, minus 1 1.5 into that function. Again, more practice, check out that video. And my last one is a kind of combination. So it's a probability and Venn diagrams together. Again, I also did a probability series to actually go through many different probability kind of questions. Again, do check that out above. Um, probability on its own doesn't come up very not, it comes out of like 10 in 13 papers, but it's the combination of probability that really makes it one of these certain topics because Venn diagrams comes up, what, four or five times, probability ends up in there. Statistics can also go down that probability front as well. So in some ways, probability is certain to come up, but it may come up in different ways you're not expecting. Um, this is a more standard question that you would see on the paper. So using the idea of conditional probability, uh, using the idea of tree diagrams to actually work out the various probabilities that you need to. And if there's one thing to know with probability in particular, it is tree diagrams and how to draw them, how to create them, how to make the fractions that go on there as well. That's really, really important. Um, if you haven't checked out the paper two prediction video, so if you're revising hurriedly for the paper two uh, exam coming up, either on the 14th of February or the 9th of uh, May, or previously, then please do check out the video you see right in front of you because I go through my paper two predictions as well.